In today's video, you will learn how to use Google Meet step by step from start to finish. And at the end of the video, we will discuss how good it compares to Zoom, the most popular video conferencing platform at present. Also in the comment section, there are timestamps in case you need to skip to specific parts of this tutorial. So Google Meet used to be only available to G Suite subscribers. However, now Google has made it available for free to everyone interested in video conferencing. One of the best parts of Google Meet is that you can start a new meeting with one click. You can access Google Meet in two ways. You can start a meeting directly from your Gmail account, as you can see on the left-hand side bar, or you can go to meet.google.com and once there, anyone with a Google account can start a new meeting easily on the browser without downloading any app. You do need a Gmail account to start a meeting in Google Meet. However, you do not need an account to join or participate in a meeting. It is really easy to set up a Google account if you don't have one. So you go to meet.google.com and click on start new meeting and then you can set up a Google account from there. So we are at meet.google.com and when you are on this page, you can either start a meeting which is similar to hosting a meeting. However, without many of the features that Zoom provides when you are hosting a meeting there. And you also have the option to join a meeting. So you can enter the meeting code here when someone sends you an invitation. For example, this is what an invitation would look like if the host sends you an invitation via email. And I can click here to join the meeting. So it's a very simple process. Now you also have the option to add the code manually if that is required. And you can see this is the code. It's a very complex code or meeting ID to prevent security issues from the get-go. So start a meeting and joining a meeting in Google Meet are practically the same thing because there are no special hosting features in Google Meet. Okay, so when we click on start a meeting or join, it will launch the service for us. So we haven't actually started the meeting yet. You can start the meeting by clicking on join when you're ready. And you can also start presenting by clicking here. If you're enjoying this video so far, please give it a like so that it can be shared with more people and help out with the YouTube algorithm. Thank you. Now presenting is actually the same thing as share screen or screen share. And there are a number of options. I will cover share screen or present in more detail when we start a new meeting. However, from here, you can immediately start sharing your screen by clicking on present. Step number three is to start a meeting, AKA host a meeting. So before we start a meeting or host one, it's a good idea to check what properties we are using for video and audio. So when we click on the dot, 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 or more options icon, we can select settings and in the settings, you will see your audio settings, video settings, and general settings. If we click on audio settings first, you want to set up which microphone you want to use and also which speakers you want to listen to. Similarly, for video settings, you can check that you have chosen the correct camera in case you have multiple cameras. And if you want to change the resolution, you can do that here as well. I would recommend leaving it on standard resolution if your internet connection isn't great, but of course that is your choice. If you have good bandwidth, then you probably would go with high definition. And then you click on done once you're finished. Now, when we launch our meeting, we are given this copy joining info screen, which is a web link that people can click on and instantly join our meeting when we approve them. 
And you also have the option to add people by clicking on add people and typing their email address in the field here. Now it doesn't have to be a Gmail email address, by the way, you can add people who have all kinds of email addresses, for example, Yahoo or Hotmail. Okay, so here we have our video screen. And as you can see, we have fairly simple management options. There are not many features as you have with Zoom. But to be fair, Meet will most likely add more in the future as time goes on and the software becomes more popular. So you can see right away that I have disabled my camera and my profile picture is showing here, which is my profile picture for my Google account. So at the bottom here is the Meeting Controls toolbar. And this is where you can enable and disable your camera. The shortcut key for enabling and disabling your video is Control E for PC and Command E for Mac. Now, if you want to mute or unmute your audio, this is where you can do that. And the shortcut key is Control D for PC and Command D for Mac. If you want to end the meeting, then you can click on the red phone icon here. Now, towards the right hand side is where captions and screen share options are located. Let's start with captions. Google Meet is the only service that can add live captions to meetings so you can understand better. You can enable and disable it here where it says turn on captions. This is a nice feature that can help you understand the person better if the connection is weak and you cannot hear their voice. As you can see from this meeting example that I had with a friend yesterday, and I have to say the live captions feature is really, really accurate and exact. So I'm really, really impressed with, with that feature. And I think a lot of people are. All right. So next to the captions we have present now. So this feature lets you project your desktop screen to the live meeting and you can choose to share your entire screen or just a window that you want to share. Now, if you want the possibility of a whiteboard type of feature, which you get in zoom, you can type canvas.apps.chrome into your URL and you will see a very similar type of whiteboard screen like in Zoom, which you can share, however, with limited amount of tools. Now, if we go to the far left of the meeting controls toolbar on the meeting details, this is where we can copy our meeting URL code by clicking here. And we can also see the cryptid code of our meeting. The meeting code doesn't expire and you can use it for several meetings with different groups, which is really convenient. Up here on the right hand corner, there is an item called attachments. Now what will happen is that a lot of meetings are set up in a meeting invitation. For example, you could ask someone to join a meeting, say at five o'clock using Google calendar. And there might be an attachment saying we're going to review this file or document. So any attachments from your Google calendar will show up here. So Google brings all the attachments from your Google calendar right to the forefront when it is shown here in the meeting. So that's a real smooth touch in Google meet. Now on the far right hand corner, when we click on the dot, 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 or more options icon, we have several options right at the top is the change layout option. And this lets you customize the chat windows layout according to your preference. There are three different layouts to choose from. By default, the auto mode is selected. You can choose from the sidebar view, spotlight. For example, if you're doing a webinar and you want the main focus to be on you and tiled layout, which is kind of like a Brady Bunch view. So you can select the layout that you like by clicking on the layout. Then we also have full screen mode and we can also enable and disable captions here as well. If we click on settings, there are a few options here. So I've already covered how to customize your microphone and video options. So you can do that here. And when you're done, click on done. And finally, at the top right hand side, we can see how many participants are in the meeting and you can live chat here as well. So live chat again is a nice feature to help you send messages during the live meeting. If you're not able to understand a person in the meeting, for example, then you can send them messages in live chat using this feature. 
but you cannot send or receive a document or file. If you want to send a message, you can type it in this field, then click enter to send. And if you want to exit out of the box, then click outside the box. Also on the very top right hand corner, we can see our own feed in a thumbnail view. So I'm going to end the meeting by clicking here. Google Meet also gives us the opportunity to set up a Google Meet session from our calendar. So we can schedule a meeting by going to our calendar directly or on the Google Meet website. You can access Google Calendar by clicking on the app icon on the top right hand corner and select calendar. You can set this to month. And if I click on a specific date on the calendar, I can add the title and time. I can invite some guests on here. And as I'm setting up the meeting, there is now an integrated option which says add Google Meet video conferencing. It also includes a meeting URL, as you can see here. So I'm going to save. And when I click into the calendar event, I can now join or start a meeting. So it makes Google Meet part of my calendar invitation, which is pretty neat when I send that out to people. So Google has done a nice job integrating Google Meet into their other products. So my final verdict on Google Meet is that if you want to use it for very quick meetings, then this is a great tool. For example, using it with people who don't have the Zoom app installed on their device. However, if you're using Google Meet with large groups, say for example, a school or a business, then Google Meet is quite limited in terms of managing these groups effectively. In particular, the absence of mute all and unmute all functionality, together with control over screen sharing between host and participants, makes this a less effective tool when using it for larger groups. So for informal gatherings of a small number of colleagues, Meet is certainly sufficient, but for anything approaching events in lecture style, then the lack of controls to enable a managed teaching environment is a barrier. Anyways, I hope you found the tutorial useful. If you have, please like the video so that it can be shared with more people. Also subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.